bearing witness. When my brother came back from the streams of lava, we walked together in the street. Two grotesques in overcoats. I took him to a cafe, a cold glass of lemonade came to a boil in his throat. He talked of bearing witness inside the volcano. His hands were badly burnt. The tips of his wings were black with ash, singed by the mayonnaise at the bottom. I looked at him. All red, like me. He shouted, an angel singing. Oh, tear out my eyes, spilling over with hot rain. Yeah, because I'm, I'm kind of, well, I don't know. I, I, this is kind you of, want me to, do you want me to see the way the stands are broken yeah, up? It's kind of like, yeah, because my, my kind of thoughts are, like it's almost two halves. I think the first, like the first, you know, the first part. That ends with throat? Right. It's just like, whatever we're doing is really chill, totally chill. And then whatever we're going to come up with is where it comes in here. So maybe like even like a little bit of a, yeah, a little bit of a break Interlude here. there, sure. Yeah, just for us to, I mean, we haven't figured out what we're doing. Right. But I did feel this almost like almost doing very minimal stuff to the first. Okay. I mean, I don't know, that's my first song. Okay, that sounds cool. You know, Mark, I don't know, almost like... Well, maybe and I kind of like the swells you were doing. Yeah, right? for the first part, but then it's something different. I don't know. I don't know if it's... I mean, I almost hear a... almost like a heartbeat kind of thing going. I mean, just... I don't know. Well, the first part is very prosaic. Mm -hmm. It's so very just it simply like descriptive. Two very different... And things. then he starts talking yeah, about so what I, happens, and it get, does get more yeah, emotional sure. until so I think that's the final of, line. Yeah. I think that's kind of what my thought and just hearing. Do you want me to break? Do heartbeats in the, for the first part yeah. and the swells. So let's, let's just try it. Let's just try it there. I will see. definitely stop at throat. Yeah, just to let us, because when she gets the throat, then we'll, we'll try to build it a little into what, where we're going. I don't even know what that is. Right. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Real. Yeah, just like, yeah. What's the, so I don't have to wear my glasses. What's the throat? oil in, oil in the throat? If you get, if yeah, throat. 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 Yeah, it's a lemonade and then comes to a boil in his throat. Okay, so I'll pause there. Greg, why don't you do just a, it's like an average. So, uh, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Bob Torcello, bass player. How did uh, you get involved with Janet? Well, probably been playing with Janet is almost goes back uh, almost 20 years. It was the mid-90s, actually. Um, I'd been bugging Janet to work poetry with music, and uh, it took a little while to convince her to do it, and uh, eventually she warmed up, came around to the idea, and we tried it in the basement one day and uh, kind of like we do now it's kind of like it, it all just works uh, pretty organically and pretty quickly um, and there's just something pretty creative about it and I don't think there's a lot of people that do what we do um, so I think it's a merging of I think we always called it at the dimes merging of the word and and uh, you know three chords and uh, it kind of kind of worked I think uh, back in those days, it was more rock-based, and I think we're a little more ambient, a little more uh, spatial now. Should I start reading? Yeah, ready? Yeah, let's see if it works for you. When my brother came back from the streams of lava, we walked together in the street, two grotesques 
in overcoats. I took him to a cafe, a cold glass of lemonade came to a boil in his throat. Not a uh, guitar player. How did uh, you get involved in playing with uh, this project? Well, I was thinking before, uh, you know, the first time I saw Janet Hamill, the first time I met her, was the Bowery Poetry Club, and uh, she was playing with Moving Star. So that's the, my first time I saw the band. And I don't know how long it was after that, a couple of years probably, where the format kind of changed or there was an opening, but Bob recruited me. I was playing with Bob in a different band, um, and I thought I could. I thought I could probably do it, because I always liked. Uh, for me, it was more like uh, I used to like uh, like movie soundtracks and things like that. You know, and I never played anything like that. You know, but just the idea of trying to put more obscure music, you know, to uh, images. In this case, words. Mm -hmm. I like the idea, and so that's what kind of interested me, I think, you know, why I said yes, just when I was invited to give it a try. And it worked pretty smooth, I think, from the beginning, you know, but I had to think in terms of, you know, you're not playing chords, you're creating moves, you know, so it was a challenge. But, uh, yeah, I was basically, the way I came in was just asked to be in at some point. What kind of music were you playing with Bob at that point? Really was a... a some original music that's pretty arranged, you know, more like um, Beatles type music, you know, and, and then we're in a rockabilly band. Oh, wow. So, very distinct difference from what's happening now. You know? Oh, yeah. Cool. And my, um, where I come from, I was born in the South, so I have some country, you know, uh, country blues and rock, you know, and it really didn't deviate much from that, I guess. Was it challenging, kind of going from that background to... It, trying to play this more. It know. wasn't that challenging actually yeah. because uh, I think I just had a feel for having listened to a lot of things that were more obscure, you know, and mm -hmm. less structured. Uh, I mean, it was a challenge, but it, I found I could do it. That's That was it. I just discovered that from the beginning I could sort of do it. Yeah. And uh, which was a nice, you know, a nice uh, discovery. But. Uh, but I have to really think in terms of like creating a wash, you know, playing a tune, you're creating a, you know, like a color or mm -hmm. something, or a wash or a background. Yeah. That sounds pretty cool. It's, it's like, really neat. It really brings out the emotion of the poem. I think like the dynamics of this, you know, like kind of just, yeah, it's like. It's only just Greggy for the whole first part almost. Yeah, just real, I think just real, when I say real, Think. It's kind of minimal. You kind of, yeah, I'm just kind of following Janet. Which you know, with your swells. Like, yeah, you got like more emotional at the very end. Yeah. So, so kind of, I mean, it's a really emotional poem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the music really uh, brought that out. We haven't used swells. No, we don't have anything like that. Like, that's really, I mean, it's, it's pretty, I mean, it's just pretty basic. There's not much, yeah. not much movement in it. Do you want me to pause I more think, places? I don't, I don't, I think, um, I mean, I think that was good in the beginning just to get us into it, but I don't think we need to do as long a pause here. Okay, okay. But I thought... Yeah, I did pause very long. Which was fine, just kind of gave us some loop, but I don't think when we're done with it, it has to be quite that long. Okay. But, yeah, you can, you know, I would just... Do what I, I was doing? I think we're gonna, yeah, I think it's gonna be a little give and take. Okay. So if you, if and you just take, not pause if you take a little, yeah, okay. if you take a little pause, you probably gonna Jump in and do something. So well, right. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. See if I thought it sounded neat, and the building was the, yeah. that was really yeah. cool. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. So that, just, just, yeah. Almost a little bit in the middle. I think we got to it just a little slower. Yeah. Slower heartbeat. The heartbeat gets a little stronger. I'm Greg Feller. I am the percussionist with Janet and Celix. How did uh, you get involved? Um. 
goes back, I would say, about 11 years ago, actually through Bob um, and actually my cousin, uh, Jay LaRubio, when they played in uh, Janet Hamill Moving Star. Uh, they needed a new drummer. The old drummer left for professional reasons. So, uh, you know, I got involved and I was hooked ever since. <laughs> What's your uh, your background musically? Like well, I've been playing of... drums uh, for close to 20 years, actually, since I was young. And um, I'm into all different styles of music from experimental to punk rock to rock and roll, rockabilly. I mean, you name it, I probably listen to it. So, but what hooked me with this project is. Um, Within the last seven, eight years, I've been really getting into world music and percussion-based music, and this was like right up that alley. So, well, I know you used to use a full drum set, a full mm -hmm. rock kit. Uh, how did you, or when did you transition from that into the more minimal setup you have now? Um, pretty much when this project started, um, I still basically play, you know, the percussion like a drum set, but you know, mm -hmm. transpose it onto that type of stuff. And was that like a, a group decision for you to bring it down or is it something you wanted to, to change it about? It's a bit of both, really. Yeah. Uh, how do you, because some poetry, I guess, is, you know, has a certain rhythm, some doesn't. How do you, you know, take the rhythm of a percussion and kind of, how do you, how do you uh, decide how that's going to, you know, what sort of beat or what sort of, what sort of rhythm or... Usually, uh, it's more like a, a group effort between me, Mark, and Bob, and Janet. We kind of just throw all our ideas in there, and it just kind of happens, you know? <laughs> and then, uh, what sort of differences do you see be between playing this sort of music and playing music that you might be playing in other bands? Um, just like the other musicians in the band, um, the other projects I play in are more, you know, rock-based, more steady beat, and, uh... But it relates to some other projects I do too, because I do some experimental stuff, and you know it works really well with this project. You know, being more ambient and you know laid back. So. An angel singing. What direction do you see uh, the music and the performance going in at this point? Now that you guys have been playing for years and you know changing well, your sound. Yeah, we well we did as I mentioned we kind of changed it more from a rock format. Um, I think we we you know keep trying to be ambient, but I think it, it's. It's 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 a little difficult for us because our backgrounds are, are more rock oriented and it's um, you know the, the bands we play in are you know go from punk to you know they're all original bands that we play in and uh, so you know we're we're trying to program our brains to do something uh, other than we're we're accustomed to and actually that's what I think is really uh, uh, interesting or, or makes it fresher is, is it's a constant challenge to what we're doing which is you know get out of your skin and break your skin and try to do something else and uh, so I think it's experimental between all of us as players and Janet who has to has to deal with us trying to 
to, to find those spots that work. And, uh, but I think it was more of a challenge in the beginning, but I think we just kind of have a formula of, you know, it's pretty much Janet reads the piece. We kind of hear her rhythm and what she's doing. And, you know, more times than not, we, we get to it pretty quickly with uh, developing some sort of a riff or a pattern or, or just a, a, a concept of the music. And uh, I don't know, it's something special. I don't think you can plan it. I don't think you can teach it and, or learn it. I think it just happens. Are there different challenges between playing music for this time, this type of performance as opposed to some other you know, bands you oh, might have yeah. played in? Well, definitely, because it's, uh, you know, usually you're, again, we're preconceived with rock and roll, three chords, and, and something's going to sound a certain way, and it's, this is just totally different. Um, and it's totally different what we did the years at Moving Star, which, which was more rock uh, or, or, or rock beat to it. And this is it's just, it's more tribal. Uh, I think Reggie's playing really, I think, anchors us to, to keep things uh, more uh, sparse. And uh, so it, it's a much more, much more of a challenge and it's much more rewarding doing this because it's something, and again, you're not accustomed to doing. It's not something you would, we probably would be doing on our own if we weren't working with Janet. So it's, you know, she's bringing us in another direction uh, from where we normally be doing music with. We walk together in the street. Two grotesques in overcoats. I took him to a cafe, a cold glass of lemonade came to a boil in his throat. seen me open for uh, Patty Smith in Central Park. She had asked me to, uh, uh, <clears throat> to open for the band. It was shortly after her husband had died and she was, you know, in the process of coming back to the city wow. and uh, reinvigorating her career and uh, she did summer stage at Central Park and asked me to open for them, just as a poet, you know, just reading. Which was quite exciting to read to 3,000 people as a poet. And anyway, he had he'd been in that audience. And there was a little bookstore in the town of Goshen at the time, and they carried local authors. And he had gone in there asking, they also ordered books. And uh, he had gone in there asking for a book uh, by Janet Hamill, one had ordered a book by Janet Hamill. And um, the woman who ran the bookstore said, uh, Oh, Janet Hamill, um, you know, she's a local author. Uh, she, uh, her book's right over there with local authors. She works right down the street at, at uh, the Goshen Library. So he bought a copy of the book and he came down and introduced himself. And he would come by all the time and um, he really wanted me to try to, uh, you know, work with uh, him and uh, uh, his band, his, the one band he would connect with at the time, which, uh, Shrubs. And I really had no interest uh, in working with a band. Even when I was younger and living in the city, you know, surrounded by musicians, you know, in the old CBGB days, you know, and Patty had even suggested, you know, why don't you work with a band? I, I really had no interest. I, I really, all I wanted to do was be a good, good poet. And um, anyway, what he, the, the, uh, the finishing stroke was he gave me to listen to. He, 
bring all these different things to listen to. And he brought two things that I particularly liked that convinced me that I could do this and it wouldn't be intrusive on the words. And he brought me Kicks Joy Darkness, which is a collaboration by different, different artists, uh, mainly music, musical artists, rock and roll people doing Kerouac, all different versions of Kerouac and all different artists and um, reading all different, you know, Mexico City Blues, sections from On the Road, all, all you know, a broad spectrum of his work, all different kinds of music. But none of it intruded on the words and I liked that. And then he gave me also John Trudell, who's a Native American uh, uh, poet and musician. And again, I was very impressed by that. So I, I uh, you know, they had a rehearsal coming up and I remember driving up to the rehearsal thinking, what are you getting yourself into? <laughs> and, uh, but uh, I found I actually liked it. Yeah. 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 What are your, uh, some of your favorite memories of performing with the band? Um, we've been, we've been fortunate in that we've, uh, um, We've been able to play a variety of places. Uh, I know when Bob Holman first opened um, the Bowery Poetry Club, we, 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 we were almost like a standard there, you know, before it really became established. And uh, we played there many, many times. And we, uh, one of our great moments was um, the CD release party for the se our second CD, Junior the Alphabet, was just, was just a great night. And we were joined by uh, Patty and Lenny Kay and Bob Holman on stage and um, some other musicians, Judith Tollock and Steve uh, Fran Francino, who's a great flautist, and uh, it was just a great night. And um, I believe you provided, uh, you filmed it. Yeah, yeah. You filmed and, it. And yeah. some, uh, another friend, uh, did great projections for the background. Mm -hmm. And we've also done the Bumper Shoot Festival in Seattle and in the Andy Warhol Museum in, uh, in Pittsburgh and um, um, and then it's interesting just before our hiatus uh, we, we, had come, we came full circle and we did summer stage again opening with Patty only this time it was with Myself with the band. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. Uh, well, I know <clears throat> you have a bunch of new uh, poems, and the guys have new uh, songs to put behind them. Uh, so, where do you see this project going forward in the future? Well, I definitely want to do a third CD. We're already talking about that, and some ideas as to just who we might work with. You know. Um, I don't want to mention any names, you know, but, uh, um, you know, there are a couple of little spoken word labels now and uh, it'd be nice to get hooked up with, with one of them so we we'll at least get directed to the right audience, you know. So we'll definitely do another CD. Uh, I would love, I would love to be able to um, continue to um, work together and, and maybe be able to do maybe college gigs or just uh, you know, bigger, bigger gigs. Yeah. I, I, I mean, we um, we usually do uh, New Year's New Year's Day at St. Mark's, and that's mm -hmm. always one of our favorites because it's uh, we're guaranteed at least five hundred people, mm -hmm. and it's you know you, you, there's just no. It, it's great to do any gig, but if you have that many people who are behind you, who are throwing, giving, directing their energy at you. It's just, you know, it's just... Well, it's not like there's a lot of other uh, poets working with musicians. No, or, no, know. so that's, it's limited, you know, as to just where we can take it. Yeah. But I would love to um, do college performances and, you know, just keep working at it and hoping that it uh, connects with someone. Well, you've been, you know, doing poetry for so long. Do you think uh, putting the music behind it kind of has opened up any doors for you, either? You know, uh, performance-wise, maybe a wider audience? Yes, I think it makes it more accessible to people who are ordinarily intimidated by poetry. Mm -hmm. uh, the music does that. 
and the fact that the music is rock and roll makes it even more accessible, even though it's ambient rock and roll, so it's electric and it's that it's our origins are rock and roll. And um, people have, have said that, you know, you know, uh, this is so different from a regular poetry reading. Yeah. And uh, for myself, uh, I mean, I still love giving regular poetry readings, and I don't think there's any any uh, anything that can uh, you know, substitute, be a substitute for, for a poet's voice, you yeah. know, un unadorned. Mm -hmm. um, but for performance purposes, it, it's, it's really great. Mm -hmm. It just adds an extra texture and an extra dynamic. And for me, I don't, I still get nervous, but mm -hmm. I don't get as nervous because the audience has someone else to look at other than me. Mm -hmm. The onus isn't all on me. You know, they don't have to just sit there and look at their hands folded listening to Janet Hamill and her, you know, her little words of wisdom. You know, they can watch Mark, they can watch Greg, they can watch Bob. And that takes pressure off me and um, frees me up in a way. Yeah. And you also uh, might get some people that are coming in to see the music and yes. you kind of almost, yes. you know, by accident they speak it's a crossover. what you're it's a, reading. Yeah. yeah, it's a crossover thing. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, so what about Bearing Witness, the, the poem that you're working on, or that you've been working on with the band? Uh, yeah. What was your inspiration behind, behind this one? Uh, last, uh, well, you know, I'm getting my MFA right now at New England College in Henniker. And uh, last semester, I was studying, um, was it my first semester? Oh, maybe it was my first, well, anyway, last year, I read, uh, one of the books I read uh, was uh, Autobiography of Red by Ann Carson. And that's right, it was my first semester because I, I felt weak in the area of contemporary poets, poets who are writing now. You know, mm -hmm. my, my head's always back on the past. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to caught up on contemporary poets. And I read uh, Autobiography of Red by Ann Carson, who's a Canadian poet. And she's also a classicist. And I, I was just overwhelmed. I, 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 I just thought it was a masterpiece. And um, the poem is inspired by that, by that book, by the central character of that book, who is a, he's a monster, a red monster. Uh, his name is Jerion. And he, in the book, um, in this society, and it's kind of timeless, you don't know whether it's present day, sometimes it's, it feels present, sometimes it, it feels, you know, ancient. Uh, but in any event, this, this, uh, in this society, um, children, newborns, are thrown into a volcano. And if they survive, uh, they are like these, um, they born witness. And they have, a, they, they're, they're magical. They're almost like angels on earth, and uh, and they're, and they're all red, and they're quite ugly, and and uh, that's what Jerion is, and uh, he's ashamed of his ugliness, and he tries to cover it up with a overcoat, cover up his wings, you know, and you know it's it's just he's the eternal outsider, you know, that it's very easy for any artist to identify with him. That that's the inspiration, and I just wanted to make a condensed version of it, I suppose, a little yeah. <laughs> tribute to Jurion, yeah. So now that uh, you and your band have uh, debuted, debuted uh, Fair Witness Live at the Seligman Center, am uh, I pronouncing that right? Seligman. Seligman. Well, I mean, it, it, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's somebody on the board who insists on the German pronunciation, which is... Seligman or Seligman, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we say Seligman. He's a surrealist painter. Yeah. Right. So how did uh, how did Bearing Witness evolve from you? You know, reading that story and then writing the poem and now now having it performed with the band live. Well, I feel that uh, um, I feel we got lucky. That's my personal feeling. Um, sometimes with the poem, it. Uh, it it won't come, the music won't come for a while, and we may just have to shelve it. 
because you know the music I'm hearing in my head is just not the music that that, that is coming forth from the band. Um, or sometimes I just present something that comes to them with something that maybe just has a rhythm that that is just a little too erratic for them, or not rhythmical enough. And I felt we got we just really got lucky. Mm -hmm. And I felt the poem itself lent itself to music. Um, it's just a short lyric, and I felt uh, I just felt of all the new poems I had. Uh, purposes of, of, of this film and making a film showing the evolution of how we work with a poem from paper, you know, and to rehearsal to a final performance in front of an audience. I just thought this one might be a good one, yeah. and uh, and. Uh, do you uh, oh, sorry? Do you I, give the guys like a direction for? Uh, before they start coming with music? Sometimes I do, yeah. but with this poem, um, yes, very often I'll have a certain kind of music I'm hearing in my head. Yeah. Like I'm saying, you know, I'm hearing George Harrison here, and I love his solo album, All Things Must Pass, and uh, I'm hearing this, I'm hearing The Doors, I'm hearing, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. And uh, um, with this one, I didn't have anything in mind. Yeah. I didn't have anything in mind. So we really, really did get lucky. Because they just, they came up with something that day that just really, really worked, I feel. Yeah. Bear with this. When my brother came back from the streams of Northern Rock, we walked together in the street. 